I got to think, I have not seen any polls. I don't know anything about anything. I got to think that Ron Nirenberg must be losing in the mayor's race because this whole uh, let's play up the domestic violence thing with Greg Brockhaus, this just smells like desperation to me. This is the bottom card in the deck. When you play this card, you don't have any other cards. And it's all it's all old news. It's all stuff from years ago. It's stuff they knew, everyone knew, or 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 at least the opposition knew. So I think it's being played now because they must be worried about losing this election, this runoff election for mayor between Mayor Nirenberg and Councilman Brockhaus. R- really Nirenberg should have won re-election because we almost always re-elect mayors. He should be in a strong position to win the runoff. He's not. He has fumbled some major issues. He has depressed his own supporters. He has done things to incite opposition. I don't even think, to tell you the truth, that opposition is about Greg Brockhaus. I think there's just a lot of people that, that are raring to cast a no vote for the way City Hall has run things the last two years. I, I, I think the beneficiary of that is Greg Brockhaus, but I don't think he's necessarily uh, the reason people are voting. No offense to him, but I, I think this is more about Nirenberg and this far-left City Hall, City Council. And so I think, and tell me what you think, it, it looks to me like in desperation they are playing this uh, domestic violence card. Now, as far as we know, Greg Brockhaus has never been charged with anything. Uh, He has never been taken to court and put on trial for anything. Um, I'll just give you a... And I don't don't know anything about these things. I don't know him. I wasn't around for any of these incidents in his marriages. I'll just make two quick points, then we'll go to your calls at 210-599-5555. Just two quick points. The first is that... um, in a marriage, the only two people who know what's going on are the two people in it. All of our efforts to understand and analyze the royal marriage or the marriage of a president or the marriage of a famous person, that's all, you're, you're all way, way off in the distance. The only two people that know what's going on in a marriage are the two people in it. The second point I'll make is that at the time these allegations or these incidents uh, happened with Brockhaus and his wives, Greg Brockhaus was a nobody. So I don't think he got favorable treatment or was able to call some sort of influential person to pull some strings or get off the hook. He was a nobody. And um, make of all this what you will. Uh, if you think it's germane and relevant to your choice for mayor, then you know what to do. If you think that it's a last-minute sort of Hail Mary pass to save Ron Nirenberg from a dilemma he has put himself in, by the way, then you know what to do. Yeah, I don't know uh, Greg Brockhaus at all. I met him here at the radio station a couple of times. Had never heard of him before he got on council. Um, I don't expect I'm going to know enough before Election Day to know what he did or didn't do in his marriage or previous marriage. Uh, I, I doubt that it's possible to really know what goes on in other people's marriages. If he had been tried and convicted of assaulting a woman, that would, of course, be germane to making him mayor. But the way they're pulling out these uh, police reports, including one he disputes, makes me think that the Nirenberg campaign is seeing this race slip away from them. And... Um, The councilman was on with Trey Ware just a short time ago here on KTSA. Here's some of what he said in response to the latest release of what had been an expunged police report. Take a listen. So there's two key points here. Number one, uh, domestic violence is an epidemic in our city. It must be addressed. But it's been very clear from my wife, family violence, domestic violence has not been an issue in our marriage, period. My wife issued a very clear statement that said we are supposed to believe women Yet there's a small group of women who refuse to believe me. Those are my wife's words. And she says she's never been a a victim before. But Ron Nuremberg has made her feel like one with his constant attacks on my family, her character, and and, and everything else. So the Nuremberg campaign is calling my wife a liar now. The facts are pretty simple. uh, Hang hang on just a second here, Greg. Let me jump in here. What what about the uh, police report then? 
Was there a police pr- well, well, report well, filed? Let me, let me be very clear. In, in two, you referenced the itch, it incident in 2006. Okay. The public record is clear. I filed the police report. Never makes it in the media. Nobody ever talks about that. My ex-wife is an honorable and decent woman. We have a great relationship. Uh, but we had a divorce, and divorces oftentimes are like deaths in the family. They're sad and they're difficult. I, w- I filed the police report in 2006. My name is the complainant. Period. The, the end of story. Nobody filed a police re- a report against me. This this one here. This this one here says Annalisa Brockhouse, though. Oh yeah, no, no, no. But you referenced the 2006 incident. I want to be very clear to the listeners. I filed that report. Okay. So he's saying he filed a report in his first marriage. In the second, uh, in, in the case of the second marriage, this report may not be a real document. I, again, I don't know how you feel about it, but. Um, even when people I'm close to tell me about their marriage, uh, they're going through a divorce, they're going through a hard time, whatever. I, I always know I'm only getting I'm only getting their side of it, and I don't I don't pretend I know what's going on or I can judge what's going on. A- and and if you are married, I'm sure you have had the experience of other people claiming to have insight into your marriage, and they don't. None of this is about his marriages. This is about the closeness of the mayor's race earlier this month, and now apparently the closeness, if not the desperation, of the mayor's campaign for the runoff on June 8th. What do you think? I mean, to pull this out and play this now, instead of defending what you've done for the last two years, instead of defending uh, decisions that are still very controversial and very sore subjects with a lot of people, whether it's Chick-fil-A at the airport, the RNC, uh, any number of other things, uh, to pull this out and, and hide behind this, that, it just looks like they're losing. I'm not saying they're going to lose. I have no idea what's going to happen. 210-599-5555 or jack at ktsa.com. And I'll tell you something else. I I think that this could work as a vote suppressor because this is the kind of thing when people hear about it that just makes them kind of, you know, ugh, whatever, forget, you know, a pox on all their houses. So this is a way of making the, vo- the potential voter feel like we don't even have a good choice here. Everybody sucks. And that's a calculated thing you do when you're worried about, uh, turnout and you're worried about momentum going against you, it's always a good idea to suggest that the upcoming election is not very important or there aren't very good choices um, because if those people that are kind of agitated and stirred up don't vote, you as the incumbent maybe can hang on. And I think that's what's going on here. I can't prove that. That's just my hunch. Um, As he said... His wife has come out, his current wife has come out and said what she said. Um, We are told ordinarily that we should always believe women uh, and that we should uh, give them credence in what they say. But I think we've learned through the latter stages of the Me Too movement that women will only be believed when it is politically convenient to believe them. So I'm sorry to rain on the Me Too parade, but that didn't really work. The, if the goal was to get universal, uh, you know, credence for women accusing men of sexual abuse, sexual assault, violence, it didn't work. All that's happened, and this goes back to the Kavanaugh hearings, this goes back to a lot of other things, all that's happened is when it's politically expedient, we believe you no matter what story you're telling, and when it's not politically expedient, uh, we wouldn't care if you had video, we wouldn't believe you. And that's it. And I think national politicians have led the way in that hypocrisy. I think Hollywood has led the way in that hypocrisy. I'm sorry to say this, and I'm not trying to malign women who have been victims, and I'm not belittling women who have been victims. I'm just saying I don't think the movement, supposedly on your behalf, has worked. Because we see a kind of convenience or cynicism in who gets believed and who doesn't. Which is where we were before the whole movement anyway. I mean, that's that's always how it's been. We'll we'll believe it when we want to believe it and we'll shut it out and ignore it and cover our ears when we it doesn't fit what we want. And I'm afraid that that's kind of a human nature thing. 
is the mayor's race really that important? And what I mean by that is, in the end, uh, if if Brockhouse was elected, how different would things be with the city? I, I don't even really know the answer to that. I know what he's talking about, but I also know the kind of math he'll be looking at at city council. Uh, I know the kind of uh, entrenched power that exists in city staff. Uh, and so people will certainly deliver a message, that's for sure. If they if they throw this mayor out after only two years, that delivers a very strong message. But, again, the people that are running this city are not on any of these ballots. They're not in any of these races. The real power, kind of like in Washington, you know, what they call the swamp, it it maintains and it persists from election to election. But 210 599 55 has it gotten to the point where the National Democratic Party puts illegal aliens first? I'll give you an example of how that looks to me after we get the news headlines from Liz. 928, it's 550 KTSA and FM 1071.